Hello, my name is Kate Stillwell, and my life's work is to build financial resilience to natural disasters for individuals and for communities. I'm a licensed structural engineer, and my expertise is designing earthquake safe buildings and homes, but we need more than safe infrastructure to be able to recover from disaster. We also need to make sure there's enough money flowing in so that people can make the case to stay in their communities, help their neighbors and plow back. So in short, my work is to engage more private market capital to serve as disaster economic stimulus. That's why I found Jumpstart Insurance, which is now wholly owned by Neptune Flood, where I am the president of Parametric Insurance. This video introduces how Parametric Insurance can be used to help groups or communities financially recover from disaster. Severe disasters like earthquakes, floods, and wildfires cause all sorts of disruption to the economy, to people's lives, with expenses that nobody can anticipate. And Parametric Insurance helps buffer that shock. It's not a substitute for regular property insurance, but it helps stimulate or jumpstart the recovery process. So here's how parametric insurance works. There is a pre-agreed lump sum dispersed immediately upon occurrence of an event that has a pre-specified data parameter, thus the name parametric. What this does is it puts the insurer and the policyholder on a level playing field with complete certainty about how much will be dispersed and in what circumstances. It eliminates the claims of adjudication. Now at the large scale, parametric insurance has been around for several decades, but it's only now becoming available to individuals because of the data explosion and the rise of facilitating technology like Jumpstart. When an individual buys a parametric policy, then before the triggering event, the policyholder pays a premium to the broker who remits it to the insurer. In addition, the technology maintains a continuous connection to the data source. Then, as soon as the triggering event occurs, the technology automatically communicates to both the insurer and the customers and facilitates the disbursement of payouts. So now one interesting feature of parametric insurance is the financial leverage. The amount of the pre-agreed lump sum can be 20 to 50 times the amount of the annual premium that's paid. What this means is that in effect, you're tapping into deeper pockets to fund disaster aid in advance. Here's an example of the data source used to trigger a parametric earthquake policy. This is Shaking Intensity as published by the US Geological Survey Shake Maps. It's public transparent data that's accessible to everyone and therefore it builds trust in the transaction. And the payout process itself is a simplified and automa automated process provided by the facilitating technology for a seamless interaction with the consumer. So if we go back to this original diagram, we remove the arrows and we reshuffle the uh, parties into a different position. And we think about, instead of providing the insurance to the individual, if we provide it to a group of people, then we can think about how the benefits of parametric uh, insurance benefit a community. Basically, it could be any community that has the motivation to financially recover from a disaster. So then the question becomes, how do we reach these groups? Could be residents of a particular geography, members of an association, constituents of a uh, city or county, customers uh, or staff members of a particular group or users of a particular app. So we reach them through the organizing entity, who in this case, I'm calling it the administrator of the community. But one, and the administrator of this community could be an employer, it could be a homeowners association, it could be a workers union, any of the above here that has a unifying force and for whom they will have an intertwined link to the financial disaster recovery of their member, member parts, their constituents. But one of the problems is that most of these organizing entities don't have additional budget to be able to pay for this pre-funding of disaster stimulus. So what that means is we need to bring, there's another party that we need to bring to the table, one who's equally motivated to build up the financial resilience of these particular beneficiaries. So let's introduce a donor organization. This is uh, one who has a connection or a vested interest in one particular group. And then that donor, pays the premium to provide that leverage of pre-funded disaster aid instead of donating to the beneficiaries after the disaster. They pay a fraction of that amount as a premium in advance to leverage the 
deep pockets of the private capital from the insurance company. It's also possible for the organizing entity and the beneficiaries themselves to pay a portion of the premium in advance so that they have skin in the game. So then after the triggering event, the large lump sum can get dispersed directly to the beneficiaries with the automation and communication from the technology layer, or the money could also be uh, dispersed via the organizing entity to the uh, beneficiaries thereafter. But there's one more party, one more group that we had, need to add to this party. And their role is to provide financial education and coalition building. Let's call this entity an outreach facilitator. And it will most likely be served by an NGO in a uh, short-term limited time role to facilitate the needed outreach across the beneficiaries, among the beneficiaries, the organizing entity and the donors. This organization would explain the power of the leverage and it would build the political capital across the various partners. So now to recap, we have all these various uh, partners and they each have an important role to play. Here's how the money flows before the event. The donor pays the insurer who then pays a small commission to the facilitating broker technology. And that's how an organization like ours gets paid for the responsibility we take for policy management, the price modeling and the insurance brokering as well as the connection to the data source for the trigger. Then, upon occurrence of the event, the money flows from the insurer to the beneficiaries with automation and communication provided by the facilitating technology. So here's an infographic that explains everything I just explained all in one slide and helps you identify each of the parties and their roles both before and after the event. And if you don't already have a static version of the slide that I sent you, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask me for it. Now, in terms of what types of disasters at this time, we can offer coverage for earthquakes, floods, and wildfires in the United States. And if you have needs beyond that, both in terms of the hazards and the geography, don't hesitate to co uh, contact us and we'd be happy to help you find the right solution. Now, here's where we need your help. We are looking for the right partners to participate in a pilot. The pilot will demonstrate the power of this model of parametric for groups. And in particular, we're looking for two of the participants. And as soon as we find one, it'll make it easier to find the other. So one option is first to find the right organizing entity or community administrator. Maybe it's a hospital who wants their staff to be able to return to work on time. Maybe it's a senior community who wants to make sure that their residents are not unduly impacted by the shock. Maybe it's a tribal authority, maybe a local service workers union. Any organization whose economic viability is linked, as I said, to the financial outcomes of their member constituents. So then, then if we find the organization, we'll be able to quickly identify and narrow down who would be the right donor with a mission to support those particular beneficiaries. Or we could do it the other way around. We could first identify the right donor. It would be a group that has a specific mission to support financial resilience of a particular group. Maybe, for example, immigrant owners of micro businesses or single working parents or first generation college graduates. In any case, once the donor is identified, then that can be used to guide us to the right organizing entity. So with that, I'll close by telling the story of a real Jumpstart customer. This is Samantha, when she first bought Jumpstart, she was a renter and she was thinking about Jumpstart's payout as a way to protect her small savings that she was saving up to buy a condo. Now she is a condo owner and she's thinking about Jumpstart again in the context of her savings so to be able to preserve that savings uh, when the earthquake causes the inevitable loss assessment so that she doesn't have to go into debt. And at the end of the day, the change we're trying to create in the world is to preserve the livelihoods of the folks who are the lifeblood of our economy and whose financial resilience has a ripple effect on the recovery and the outcomes for our whole communities. I cannot wait to hear your feedback on who you might think is the right participant to be a organizing entity or a donor. Or if you have feedback in general, don't hesitate to visit our website, contact me directly. Thank you so much for your attention.